The NDC Transport Initiative for Asia, NDC TIA Regional Projects aims to facilitate a paradigm shift to zero emission transport across Asia. The program is supporting India, China and Vietnam to develop comprehensive decarbonization strategies and solutions to implement. Beyond the three countries, on the regional and global level, the program has been able to maximize impact by extending support to additional countries in Southeast Asia, sharing lessons learned, increasing discourse on decarbonizing transport and promoting efficient, multi-stakeholder approaches coordinated between government ministries, civil society and the private sector. These approaches included creating regulations and technical standards to promote electric vehicles and other low-carbon transport technologies, enhancing fuel economy and greenhouse gas regulations, adopting measures that enable a switch to low-carbon fuels from renewable energy, building capacities in greenhouse gas modeling for transport and assessing best practices for financing climate actions in transport. The NDC Transport Initiative for Asia was set up to promote the goal of a zero emission transport system. At the time, India, China and Vietnam did not yet have a zero emission target in place. So we wanted to create a project that would tap into this huge mitigation potential by outlining the pathways towards zero emission transport and supporting the policy instruments to get there. The project was very successful. By focusing on electric mobility deployment, we were able to contribute to the fast e-mobility uptake in India. At the heart of it all is our close collaboration with Niti Aayog. As GIZ, we believe that for the transformative change that we need, we can only achieve that with a multi-stakeholder approach and bring everyone on board. Through the project, we were able to bring together close to 2,000 stakeholders under the Forum for Decarbonizing Transport in India, which was spearheaded by Niti Aayog. Through these discussions, combined with the technical studies provided by the project, we were able to contribute to the development of policy in India. For instance, GIZ's work on integration of renewable energies and charging infrastructure into the electricity grid are currently guiding a national task force on the development of a roadmap for charging infrastructure. And I would like to thank the International Climate Initiative of the German government for providing the funding for this project without which none of this would have been possible. Germany is a key partner to India's efforts to cut carbon emissions and achieve net zero targets by 2070. The Indo-German Green and Sustainable Development Partnership, the GSTP, plays a very crucial role in cooperating for Germany with India towards this shift towards a low carbon, climate resilient future through knowledge sharing, capacity building, policy support, technology transfer, but also through financial cooperation and project implementations. The NDCTIA regional project is part of the International Climate Initiative, the ICI, which is commissioned by the federal, the German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action, the BMWK, in collaboration with the German Federal Ministry of Environment and our for federal foreign office. We at GSZ India, we work closely with Indian policymakers to develop and implement climate policies and regulations through different projects on sustainable urban mobility, which includes uh, e-mobility, for example, and also through other transport initiatives. The NDC TIA India project implemented by GIZ, it aims to support the government of India in achieving its climate goals, particularly in the transport sector. It is by fostering a sustainable and low carbon transport system. German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action leading this initiative under the International Climate Initiative, IKI, along with Niti Aayog as the key partners. Now Niti Aayog is the key implementation partner from the government of India. It is facilitating the policy support and stakeholder engagements. The principal objective of these projects are developing and implementing effective climate policies and regulations for the transport sector and providing technical assistance to improve policy frameworks for electric vehicles and charging infrastructure under FAIL, Faster Adoption and Manufacturing of E-Vehicles program. Now, facilitating coordination among various ministries, departments, and stakeholders, these are the main objectives. Establishing platforms 
for private and public stakeholders to collaborate and formulate decarbonization pathways for the transport sector. Now, financing dialogues with stakeholders that is equally important, including the representatives from the different ministries, state governments, financing institutions, think tanks, research organizations, I mean the entire gamut of uh, stakeholders, including international government bodies. Enhancing the capabilities of policymakers, which is very significant, and practitioners through training and capacity building initiatives. Promoting best practices, because after all, we need cross-pollination of ideas and innovative solutions for sustainable transport, supporting technology transfer to enhance the adoption of sustainable transport solutions. Now, to name a few initiatives which have been able to support the larger transition in transport sector through this project, they are Forum for Decarbonizing Transport. The project has achieved various significant milestones, such as at the national level, Stakeholder Platform Forum, for decarbonizing transport. Now, this forum has brought together 1,800 plus stakeholders. They have developed 65 plus technical articles, blogs, 12 plus knowledge products they are involved, and 23 plus working papers, 12 plus uh, technical reports across 42, which is a sizable number, 42 thematic dialogues. Now, through Udeshya, which is another initiative, Udeshya NDCTIA has strengthened gender responsive approaches to bridge the gap between communities and decision makers. Digital library, yes, that is very, very relevant these days. On green mobility, this exemplary digital library and knowledge hub initiative, it has attracted global researchers and professionals to utilize technical resource material in enhancing capabilities and capacities and knowledge. Switch daily campaign awareness becomes very, very significant. So the working group partners supported the Delhi government in organizing this campaign to accelerate the adoption of EVs in the state. Through these efforts, the Delhi EV cell increased EV cells by almost 15%, which is a sizable percentage which is a sizable increase from February 2021 to March 2023. Increased subsidies for E3-wheelers provided input that led to the increase in Delhi government subsidy for electric three-wheelers from INR 30,000 to over you know, 55,000. NDC analysis of G20 countries, that was again a major initiative. As part of this project, an analysis of the nationally determined contributions of G20 countries on the decarbonization of transport sector that was performed. The success achieved has indeed paved the way to reach the outcomes from the NDC TIA project of formulating pathways for decarbonizing transport in India based on technical assistance and improving the policy and procurement frameworks for EVs and charging infrastructure. So as we see, the success achieved has indeed paved the way to reach the outcomes from the NDC TIA project of formulating pathways for decarbonizing transport in India based on technical assistance and improving the policy and procurement frameworks for EVs and charging infrastructure. So it's time for me, ladies and gentlemen, to compliment GIZ all their partners in this NDCTIA initiative. And I am extremely hopeful, hopeful that the version 2, the NDCTIA 2 that we will be launching very soon, that would be all the more impactful. So congratulations and compliments to GIZ. As part of the NDCTIA India component, GIZ focused on various critical areas of electric mobility and initiated dialogues with international finance institutions to finance climate actions in transport. We performed a status quo analysis on different EV segments in India for electric two- and three-wheelers, cars, trucks, and buses. GIZ, with the support of the working group partners and key stakeholders, both public and private, in the sector identified various gaps and challenges in the adoption of EVs in India. Additionally, the NDCTIA and e-mobility projects are jointly supporting the development of an EV charging infrastructure roadmap 
as part of the EV task force under the Viksit Bharat Vision 2047, created by the Ministry of Heavy Industries. Fossil fuel consumption is a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. Decarbonization of the transport sector will help India to reduce its carbon footprints and meet its climate goals. Besides this, decarbonization will also benefit India in many ways, including improved air quality, reduction in oil imports, economic growth, and improved energy efficiency. The NDCTIA was one of the first initiative to bring together the government and the industry stakeholders together. It's in fact one of the first platforms to chart the pathway for decarbonization, specifically for the transport sector in India. The forum, which was under the aegis of the NDCTIA initiative, has been able to bring together various stakeholders, including research organizations, government stakeholders and industry bodies to really think about what is the pathways for India to decarbonize. It has taken India at global platforms like ITF, at UMI, at IEA, at transforming transportation and multiple events, including clean energy ministerial to really talk about India's achievement and pathways towards decarbonization. As part of the NDCTIA, WRI India undertook a series of initiatives to promote charging infrastructure, both at the national and at the regional level. WRI India's research and analysis informed the draft battery swapping policy developed by Niti Aayog in 2022. At the regional level, WRI India worked with the Dialogue and uh, Development Commission of Delhi to release a series of uh, charging guidebooks for residential, office and commercial charging use cases. The NDCTIA has been instrumental in bringing a gender and just transition perspective to the decarbonization uh, conversations happening in India. Uh, as WRI, we've been working on various aspects under this umbrella. Uh, first one is the Fair Free Public Transport Working Paper on, uh, on the Fair Free System of uh, Delhi, uh, which has been uh, one of the pioneer states in uh, providing free public transport system for women, which was followed uh, by multiple states. Uh, we looked at the impact of uh, free public transport on uh, women's access to mobility, their savings and spendings. And the second uh, working paper that we worked on was uh, looking at uh, the uh, uh, female labor force participation uh, in the EV ecosystem in India. So we looked at some deliberate strategies undertaken by uh, up and coming uh, EV uh, startups and uh, industries in India uh, and and also uh, try to assess how these can be scaled up to uh, make this transition into electric mobility a just transition. ITF is delighted to have been a part of the NDCTIA for the last four years. It's been a privilege to work with the six other partner organizations and with Niti Aayog um, in a deeper capacity over this project. Working as part of this consortium has been an incredible opportunity to build connections and collaborate with so many organizations in India and the region. Our work in India has primarily focused on improving capacities for data collection, processing, and modeling, as well as facilitating knowledge exchange and policy dialogues. The ITF also developed two technical studies. The first one focused on the Indian passenger transport sector and was developed uh, together with the World Bank. It emphasized that the Indian cities should focus on a transition from private vehicles to public transport, uh, particularly electric buses, which, were, um, which are powered by renewable energy, while using a life cycle assessment to inform policy and investment decisions. The second technical study focused on the freight sector in India and was developed together with the Institute of uh, Transportation Studies at UC Davis. The report identifies economically feasible truck segments for electrification and outlines a four-pillared roadmap uh, for transitioning India's heavy-duty trucks to zero-emission battery electric uh, technology. We truly hope that de uh, redefining transportation, India's approach to low-carbon transport event, continues to inspire stakeholders to collaborate uh, towards a sustainable and greener future of transport in Asia. So NDCTIA project is an interesting project because it includes multiple partners. And these partners are not only India, but 
outside India as well. And one of the important takeaway of this project was collaboration. I think it is an inter interesting case where multiple partners came and worked together on a common cause. We at ICCT did some, did some very interesting stuff as part of this project. So, for example, one of the th first work that we did was looking at transport emissions. So, we came up with a meta-analysis study which looked at emissions from various other studies, how do they vary and what's the future like. So, it was a very interesting study to understand transport emission. The second interesting work that we did was looking at battery swapping. It was an evolving concept, a new concept and we came up with some initial research which eventually led to the draft uh, battery swapping policy coming in. We also looked at charging infrastructure work. Uh, both for passenger as well as commercial vehicle and that was an, again a very interesting piece of work. And last but definitely not the least was the work around fame. So we looked at fame and how uh, the scheme has performed and we came up with some interesting insights on what could be done in the next round of fame scheme. So that was also very interesting. Also all this would have not been possible without the support that we got from Niti Ayog as well as BMWK. But I would also like to mention the coordination effort that GIZ took to get this work rolling was also phenomenal. So I'm very excited that we as ICT were part of this project. And our main contribution to the India component included a report on the international review of an EV battery recycling ecosystem. Furthermore, we had a study tour with some Indian delegates visiting Germany. We did a report on G20 stock tagging and a report on EV policy mapping for Indian states. And I think what all of these activities had in common or the vision that they share is that we wanted to share the German and European and international experiences regarding transport transformation and see how they fit into the Indian context and how vice versa the progress in the Indian transport electrification can be an inspiration for Germany, for example, in uh, smaller transport segments, uh, transport vehicle segments such as two and three wheelers. Among the highlights in the NDCTIA project for me were firstly when we launched the G20 stock taking report in Goa at the side event of the G20 Energy Minister Conference um, with a big international audience and media coverage and some very high level Indian representatives present such as the Goa Chief Minister and the G20 Sherpa. And I'm now very much looking forward to the second phase of the project um, and to collaborate further on accelerating the decarbonization of the Indian transport sector and the international transport sector. India's transport sector, the third largest GHG emitter at 30%, has seen emissions more than triple since 1990. To tackle this, Niti Aayog's eFast initiative has been pushing freight electrification in India, which requires essential policy and development support. With the need to reduce emissions under NDCs and NCAP, addressing road transport emissions from trucks is critical. Although trucks make up only 3% of the vehicle fleet, they account for 53% of particulate matters emissions. In NDC TIA's second phase, the focus is on freight transport and commercial vehicles, aiming to improve the knowledge base and framework conditions for medium and heavy commercial vehicles through gender responsive planning. Phase two will promote truck electrification engage stakeholders, develop a data repository for freight transport analytics, piloting uh, zero emission trucks, build capacities and demonstrate the feasibility of e-truck operations, crucial for reducing greenhouse gas emissions and enhancing energy security.